Welcome back to the Western Wilds on Farming Simulator 22 for episode 40 with me, Mr. Sealy P. As you've already seen, some grass work, some cultivating. I did sell the old cultivator I had. Was it the tiger mate, the case tiger mate? I think it was. And I've bought the uh, the big old flexi coil because I thought it'd make life a little bit easier. I haven't done anything with the mega field, but I have prepped and reseeded the uh, what was the soybean field. I put oats in that. We're gonna have a look at it in a minute. I did say in the last episode that all the odds and ends. I do still have four pallets of planks. Actually, I was gonna go, but I've got. The bread pallet would finished. We got bread, we got cake, we got some more clothing, we got tomato ketchup, we've got the mixed salad, uh, we've got um, the syrup, we've got soy milk, we've got cheese, and we've got a cereal. I'm going to sell what I can here, and then whatever I can't sell here, I'll take to relevant sell points. So we're going to do that first. All the grass I cut, my silo that was processing all my silage and stuff was down to about 700,000 litres. I know that's that kind of, it was, oh, it was down to 700,000. Um, all the grass I cut, and I cut loads, put me back up to 2 million litres. So I got about 1.3 million litres of grass, um, which I was very happy with. So we cut an absolute load, collected an absolute load, and I'm going to just turn the engine off. So let's back this up and see what we get. Like I said, I don't know what of these it will take. Some it won't. Some I think I'm going to need very specific um, cell points for, I think. I'm not going to be able to get the rest of that off, am I? Not without potentially getting this trailer stuck, uh, which I may have just done. Okay, we'll get the cake and that sold. Hopefully I've got enough oomph to pull that back. The train comes on the other line, so I'm fine. I'm, I'm backed off that far. So ketchup's not accepted. Bounce, there we go. Um, yeah, so what the other thing I've done. What's ready to harvest? We are into March. My sugar beet field, directly here, is ready to harvest. My canola's ready to harvest. And my corn is ready to harvest. The sugar beet and my sugar beet down at my root production area, root crop production area, and my vines. I'm going to be doing sugar beet cutting, which you probably already seen from the thumbnail i haven't done the thumbnail at this point but you've probably already seen it so i've i've leased uh, a roper and we've started doing the sugar uh, sugar beet here i'm going to unload that i've bought over the conveyor belt that i had for doing rocks i'm hoping it's going to work with the sugar beet and then i'm going to go and sort out getting the beaverator we're going to do the you know, going to do the beaverator um extreme sugar beet cut i mean is that too extreme, do you think? Maybe. Um, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, all my daily chores are done. Eggs and everything are uh, moved. I haven't done the honey yet. Milk I've moved from the cows and put that into the dairy. Or that The dairy's not running at the moment. I've filled up the total mix ration. That's good to go. So I'm going to have one harvester, maybe two, doing... And no, probably just one, because I've got so many other jobs to do in the background. I'm going to have one running on the canola. I'm going to have one running doing corn and then we're going to whiz over once I've sold these. I'm going to grab the um, sugar beet I've got over at the root crop. I'm going to bring that over. Then we're going to go and get the beaverator, bring that over and we're going to do a load 
cut and we'll leave some normal because obviously I've got a much bigger field of sugar beet now so we should have a load more and we'll get all of that into the sugar mill then the corn will be split between our grain mill for doing the corn corn mill and cracked corn it'll be split between the ethanol plant and where else was it going to go to oh my food production facility I think these should just sell at one of the other um, sell anything points I think we'll have to give that a go so yeah so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be mainly the sugar beet cut was what I was aiming for but the fact we're into the next month and I've got stuff ready next month into April and I said I said a while back I think people were concerned I was going to end the series like immediately like click of the fingers bang done not do any more I still haven't done all that poplar I planted I think that'll be ready in April and I was going to do poplar bales wasn't I, I think that's what I said I was going to do um, I have also switched back my gold production to manual rather than selling um, I have up until this point done the selling myself pretty much but when I said about getting to the episode where I sell all my products, whatever I've got left, I did say the problem I have is that because I've got so much, it will be too unwieldy to sell um, all the pallets. I can't put them all on storing and then be able to deliver all of the pallets. Just do, it would be just too much of it. Even if I use various different trailers and things that, that will do it, auto loads and things, there we go, auto loads and things like that, there's just too much of it. Well, soy milk's taken a while. It's all right. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I am aware, and the reason why I've been selling a lot of my products myself manually, like I just did there, is because you take a hit. If you do, if you do sell them, it takes an average of the prices of all the sell points. Then you lose. I can't remember what the percentage was. It's. 20 30 percent something like that it's, it's quite a big chunk you end up losing but i think because of the amount of methane i've got the amount of silage i've got the amount of stuff i've got all over the place i've got now my ethanol plant when i put my um soybean in our diesel production and our ethanol i put the, the corn's been still going in so i had that set back off and running again we are now sitting on um 28 000 litres just over of ethanol 86 000 litres of corn gluten meal we've got nearly 20 000 litres of diesel that's brilliant. Uh, actually, my cracked corn on that one has run out, so I'll switch that off. Sorghum flour, that's all still distributing. But yeah, so... Um, and then we've got 57,000 litres just over of soybean meal. So I've got a load there, and I'm going to put some more corn in so we'll get more ethanol. Um, I was thinking, again, I, I don't know how much further forward I'm going to go. Probably not far enough to get to the next harvest. But I did think I would do that other field. I don't know why, I just kind of got into the, the groove. I was prepping the field and thought I might as well seed it and then roll it. That's a much bigger prospect. I did think about putting soybean in that, doing massive soybean. And then I could do so much diesel, it would be ridiculous. Uh, the other thing I was going to show you, um, you're probably aware already. I, I know, you know, they've been out a while now, but those bags, the 82 Studio bags that I've been using, um, you can, or I have been using, you can use them without an attachment. So you like telehandlers will just click on automatically and puts a pallet underneath. I've been using my telehandlers with the strap mods, that, that one, the John Deere, uh, the bag handling one. So I've got a load of potatoes that I put in as well now. But here's the thing. Um, I've been using the straps on that, the John Deere BH1112G, to pick it up. But... The other thing as well is because of the fact these hold a huge capacity and can be picked up without needing stupid amounts of weights, you can actually lift them by hand. That's got 108,000 litres of potatoes in it. I know it's not realistic. And now I have cleared all of the sugar beet that was here. I've got sugar beet in here and I've got the last little bit to do. So I've got 83,000 litres. Like I said, I know it's not realistic picking up by hand. I could use it. But the thing is, just to show you, for clearing them like this... You can leave one of these actually in the spawn point if you wanted to, and it should just as they pop up, they'll spawn into it, which kind of works quite nicely. But 
if you're having a you know if you're having a problem with the fact that you know that's too heavy and you shouldn't be able to lift it that's fine then use a vehicle like i say i can i can bounce between doing various different ways with it and now we've got our sugar beet harvester running on the other field we're gonna have loads of sugar beet these are ones just sort of tied over as we go and what i can do now if i wanted to is switch those over from sugar beet to corn but as we've got sugar beet filled and a corn field ready to go now so I can do it with this, with straps like that, or I can do it without the attachment and just click up and it adds a kind of, it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A pallet uh, underneath it. Or, yeah. So there's multiple ways of tackling it. These won't fill up those potato boxes because those are from, from the seed potato mod and that one's actually not covered by these bags. All the ones that H2 Studio did manage to do, all the mods that it does cover, that's not one of them. Too bothered if that's kind of on there. Uh, I was going to use a phrase that I shouldn't use. Um, it's off centre a little bit, let's just say that. But again, because I'm really strong, I can just drag it by hand and straighten up on the trailer if I want to. Like that. Now, will that strap above? Yes, it will. Brilliant. Strap that down. So, when we get back over there, we'll get this going. I'm going to unload the first load of sugar beet. We need to go and get the beaverator. But before I do that, I'm going to grab the two harvesters. One for doing the corn, one for doing the canola. We'll get those going. What I'll do is take some of the canola over... ...to my oil shack. And we'll get a load of that going. So as it stands at the moment, my sunflower and my olives. Sunflower I've got coming from open gardens and olives I've got from the olive trees. So the canola is the first one of the oils where I'm actually going to take a crop there to drop off. So, yeah. But these bags, I love. These are, like I said in the, whichever episode it was, and I was saying about things that come out and things that will move with you when you go to new Let's Plays. I'm absolutely using these again. You know, when you first start out, especially if you set it for the unreal capacity, but even if you don't, 10,000 litres for a grand, it's, it's storage. It's immediate storage for next to nothing. And you can manipulate them by hand, you can move them around. They're so versatile with what will pick them up, how you pick them up. As you can see, all, this, all the grass are kind of cut, cut all over the place. Um, actually, I've got to be careful which way I go here, because I don't want these to unload into something by accident. So let's take these over here. So these will be going hopefully through the conveyor belt and then we'll unload the first load of sugar beet from that. I'll probably try and split it down the middle so once half the field's done we'll sugar beet cut half of it and then the other half will all go so we'll have sugar beet and sugar beet cut all good to go. So that's that. Harvesters. I'm going to go and grab those. I don't know if you noticed on my way past this one is the modded one. Uh, this was the yeah, the SL80 22 Quantum 40 kilometers per hour one. No. Um, and I can't remember who it was by. TC816 Auto Load by Dr. Julia. So if you want to use that one. So if that does work with the sugar beet, absolutely brilliant. Now I did put in the extra shelter. And I kind of, I was trying to work out the best way to get my harvesters in there with the headers to store them. And it's kind of... Yeah, it's a, it's a weird one, I don't know. It works, because the shelter I was using is higher one side than the other, but even on the higher side, or maybe it's not, it might be exactly the same. Maybe it's just the impression I'm getting. No, it's definitely higher that side than that side. Um, they won't go in through this gap because of the height. So what I did, because they turn on a dime, I took them in and turned them and put them in forward. Then I put two headers along there and one header in there. So I've got room for getting them in and out and grabbing the headers if I want to. So if we grab number one, so like I said, I can't go forward because by the time we get to the back of it, we're too high for coming out of there, but I can come out that way. We'll get one going on the canola and then number two, I'll get it going on the corn. If I was only doing a corn harvest or only doing the um, canola, I would probably get multiples going on each field, but I don't need to. I've only got one corn header as well for the time being, so that will do. So I'm gonna get this going on the canola which means I'm going to be bouncing backwards and forwards with various different trailers. But I've got plenty of trailers, but we've got enough now with the pickup back and the pickup trailer. And then the two other trailers I've got 
just about enough room. We should be okay. So Canola on this one. Let's swing around on here and we'll come in at a bit of an angle to start off with. Get that going. I'll do a couple of trips this way and then I'll set it up off and running. And then we'll get the cop corn going as well and then I'll focus on getting that sugar beet cut. We'll go and get the beef rater. I have also got this month's digest date over at the slurry yard. So, and my lorry's up there as well, so I'll sell that. We'll use that lorry to bring the beaverator back. Yeah, it's all, yeah, choreographed. It's a ballet. <laughs> the farm ballet. The problem is I'm in that cycle of, <laughs> as, always, as always am, I can't just leave something. And I, and I don't want to just leave something, but I know once this field's done, the sugar beet field's done, and the cotton, uh, the, co the corn next to me, the temptation to then say, right, okay, I'll, I'll get those ready again. I'll prep them again in case I put something in moving forward, which was what I said. If I want to then play this off camera just for myself, there's the potential that I'll just keep going. If we look again at our stats, you'll see, I can't help myself. We're up to 257 hours played on top of the previous save game, which again was 100 plus. So we're going to be knocking on 400 odd hours. And we're on episode, we're actually on episode 40. So that's a 10 to 1 ratio. 400 hours played for potentially 40 hours of Let's Plays. <laughs> I know my episodes are normally about an hour. Um, thank you to people who commented that was, I, mean, I was saying about um, different YouTubers and how their, their channels, uh, Let's Plays, seem to go on a lot longer. And a couple of people messaged me and said, but you've got to remember, the, the people that I mentioned, generally speaking, their Let's Plays are a lot shorter. They might only be 20, 30 minute episodes, whereas I'm, I'm doing double that. So for each of my episodes, if I wanted to, <laughs> not that I can ever seem to manage, I do keep saying, this, this Let's Play, they're going to be shorter episodes. I could have potentially had 80 episodes out of this Let's Play rather than 40, I guess. Not that I'm stopping on 40. Again, I don't want people to panic and go, oh, that's it, it's the last episode. No, it's not the last episode. I've got stuff to do. Let's get number two out. Spin that around. Go and grab the corn header. Right, so, as you can imagine, once we've got this going, both of those will be chugging away. Once they're full, I'll sort them out. Should be able to connect to that. There we go. Ah, very productive. My first lot of cows in this first pen next month, again into April. Another reason I kind of want to go into April as well is they're going to be ready for new births, so we, we should get another 40 cows in the first pen. The second pen, because it took me a few months before I then moved on and got a second pen, they're a little bit further behind. So we won't be getting any more from them. The pigs, that's a good point. I didn't check the pigs. Hang on. Because uh, they weren't far off either. Where are our pigs looking? Yeah, we've got new, yeah, new births. I need to go and f sort out feed. So our original 144, we've now got another 144. That's not bad. We didn't get that long ago. It doesn't feel that long ago that we got them. So we've doubled our pig stock. I mean, realistically as well, you know, we can sell them, fatten them up, sell them on. That's kind of the point. Let's do a line across this way. So we should, we're going to get a lot more corn this time because I've got a double field. So we should be a lot better with this. Once I've got this going, and I'll set it off running the other way, we'll let that run. And I'll, like I said, I'll split the corn between various different places. Uh, the canola is pretty much, I'm trying to think now. I'm not gonna put all of it. I will put some into the oil shack and then some of it I will store because I'm sure there was another process that required canola and I can't remember what it was. Oh, was it doing, was it for that pig food thing that I kept talking about? It might've been the pig food. So I'm gonna see you in a minute. We'll sit, get rid of the digestate up there, we'll get the beef raised, we'll bring that down, we'll get there doing some sugar beet cut, that way I can get the sugar beet harvester cracking on a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I'm because I'm, I didn't do, when I did the um, 
mod review on that I did lumber and I did stones I didn't do sugar beet so I wanted to give it a go I know it's excessive there are so many different ways there's different auger wagons and stuff now you can use and there, there are different ways of doing your sugar beet cut it, it is a very extreme very extreme way of doing it but if you are going to be doing things like stone and logging for wood chips because that does all of them it actually works out really well we're multitasking okay so we're getting rid of the digestate and then we'll go and grab the beaverator it wasn't cheap to lease the um the sugar beet harvester but again it's, it's that situation with the amount of sugar beet i'm going to get off the field and then sugar beet cut with the beaverator I'm, i will make more from the sugar than it costs me to lease it so when you've got that nice balance it works really well that's it's not a problem at all it's if you're doing a fairly small field and you lease a big piece of machinery like that you, there's always that worry you're not going to get the offset you need to, to afford to pay for it. I've still got 2 million litres of sugar cane that I can sell, so it's not bad. 144 uh, grand. 144, what's the thing? 144 peanuts. 144 grand. So, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to using this, I really am. I know I say it all the time, it's any, any mod that just, you know, when you're excited about trying something out, excited about using something, that's really cool. Let's back that up there. So, we're going to need the beaverator. And we're going to need the little back thing that goes with it. So, if we go to our vehicles and we go to forestry machines, scroll along to the end to there. We're going to lease the beaverator. We want it under, I'm going to make sure I get the right one this time, sugar beet to sugar beet cut. Uh, we'll set up, I'm going to go for the, do I want the aggressive ones? No, we'll go for the size smoother ones. I'm going to go orange. Hmm, do I want orange? I don't want to go too pale. No, that's too boring. That's a bit much. I say a bit much, and then it goes for orange. I'm going to go for orange. Why not? Uh, so we're going to lease that. 17 grand. Yeah, it will be fine. We'll easily make the back. And then we go down to dollies. There we go. Do that in orange as well. Room colour will be the same. No license plate. Let's lease that. So <laughs> this is fantastic. If you, if you don't watch mod reviews, if you haven't watched it, if you haven't seen this, I, you, you might not have done. You might be completely new. Put that right underneath till those rubber bumpers hit there. Then turn it off and jump out. Going to jump into this because this is a vehicle in its own right, but it does go very slowly, only six miles an hour. I attach that, puts that on, and raises that, which turns this into a trailer. Let's get those on. Heavy load. Ah. I hadn't encountered... Oh, I went too far, that's why. <laughs> I'm thinking, why wouldn't I go under? Because the attachment's there, it's like a gooseneck. Uh, we should have enough room, should we? Must have been nice and wide. For all you lorry drivers out there are watching and shaking your heads, do apologise. <laughs> careful where I place this. I need to probably put it as close to the edge of the field as I can um, because I'm also conscious of the fact that the sugar beet harvester will need to turn around. So what we'll do, if we put it about here, like that, and we disconnect, just move that out of the way. Jump onto this. 
Oh no, he will jump in there. Disconnect that. Then jump on this. Actually, to be fair, I can probably just leave that there, but. If I just put it to the side so it's out there, can we can put the pipe above. Then jump in this, turn that on, pipe out. Where can we adjust the pipe? Actually, that's something I haven't thought to check. Did I do it on my... Probably did it on my wood chip. No. So that's still saying wood chip, but the bottom right is saying sugar beet, so I haven't got a whack. <laughs> that's, where, that's where the panic came in before. Right, turn it off for a moment. So, next then. Let's put, well, let's get that out of the way, because I have to go in a moment. So I need to tip into something. Put that about there. Okay, I'm alright at the moment because I've got saplings. Once these trees have grown up, I'm obviously a bit more limited for space. So what I can do then is tip into that. I said I was going to need lots of trailers, didn't I? <laughs> I think my cotton, my cotton, well, I keep saying cotton. Back up a little bit, that should be right there. And now we need that. And if you have got this one, especially on the 40 km per hour one. So yeah, 26 miles an hour. It's brilliant because it means you haven't got to mess around then with... Uh, towing it anywhere so I'd hope this is going to work I might offset this a little bit or I could put it around the other side couldn't I just to give myself enough room so let's raise that up put that about there maybe hopefully that'll work right hey we can but try if not, it's going to be a lot of shoveling. <laughs> I was hoping it wouldn't. Or I, what I can do is actually use the bag. That's not a bad idea. Should we use the bag first? Let's try that. So, first trial. Field trials commence. <laughs> Probably could be using the telly. I thought I could use the telly handle with it. That's really weird. I'm getting that flickering where the field's changed. Let's do that and that. Uh, right, so let's turn this on. What unfolds? I know it says unfold, but I can't tell. Okay. We are going. So, in theory, let's pick that up. Oh, it's going. Let's drop that there. Pick up from there so we can see a bit better. <laughs> let's drop that down. Let's drop that on the floor. Oh, you beauty. Sugar beet cup. Oh, it's just joy. Pure joy. <laughs> I'm so glad this has worked. So what I'll do, um, yeah, we can use that or... Like I say, you can lift it up with a tiny hand. Maybe. Whatever you want to do. I'm just really strong and free weed to fix this. Oh, 
Okay, I'm gonna, I've brought over the telehandler. I'm going to do it, I say orthodox. Using the telehandler with that, I know that's not orthodox because it's unreal capacity. I know this is unreal capacity. And so is that. But with regard to like putting into a tipper or a trailer or something like that, so I'll unload a little bit of this. I'm curious to see as well whether it will unload... It's supposed to unload into those um, bags, so I'll try that as well. Because I'm curious. I'll do about half, it doesn't really matter, but I'll do about that. I have taken the liberty of taking the lorry from here and the other lorry, taking both trailers out to the fields to unload the first load of canola and the first load of corn. Canola, I think we'll get about 60,000 litres in total, so yeah, I'll probably put half of that into the uh, oil facility and um, the rest I'll store just in case. Like I said, I thought there was something else, but for the time being, I love the way that moves around in there. It's so cool. So this should work just by tipping on the floor because this one picks up from the floor. And now we know it does sugar beet, that shouldn't be a problem. So let's try that. Okay. Oh, that's weird. So it'll pick up from it, but not... That's supposed to pick up from the floor. So because that's not running? Hmm, okay. Turn that on. Turn that on. Oh, that could have just been a bad move. Hang on a minute. Turn it on. Oh. I just had the capai belt turned on. Oh. <laughs> right, let's take the light in there. Right, so I so say that's more conventional means doing it. I mean, I'm doing it from the tipper back, but from a tipper or a trader or something. So now what I want to try is this. And once I've done this, I'll, then, um, I'll let the sugar beet harvester carry on and uh, then we'll just get cracking and that's going to take a while because it's a big field. I've only got the one harvester so it's going to take quite some time. But what we'll do, um, again I might end up doing the rest of it off camera. But, so if I put that about there, should this... Oh, we'll try start the engine. It does. <laughs> oh, these bags. These bags are brilliant. I know I kind of, when I did the mod review, I was, I was excited and I thought that the concept of them was great. But the thing is, as well, when you're doing a mod review, you, I, I couldn't cover all the mods that potentially it would work with. So, what I like is the fact that giving it a go now, it's really kind of unleashing its full potential. You can really see just how much you can do with it. If you don't like the fact it's floating around a little bit, there is the one with the cage as well, but... Yeah. So I'll raise it up enough so the spout goes above that. Out there. There we go. Brilliant. So yeah, like I said, I've got work to do. Uh, what I'll probably do is, um, the, the, I think the uh, canola will be done first. So once the canola is done, I'll drive some over and we'll put that in. Um, corn we might have to do later on. We are going to get quite a lot from this. We can move that out of the way. What I might do is swing the conveyor to the other side, I think. That way, I'm not in the way of the sugar beet harvester turning around. Let's put that down there for the time being. I know that'll work, which will speed things up. And again, I, I, I love having these extra things like sugar beet cut and all these extra processes that we get to do. I know not just production chains, but this is a just a really cool extra, you know. So let's put that this side by the road. 
and then we can do it from this side and we're not in the way of the sugar beet harvester. That at least is the plan. I mean, it might still need a bit of room. If, if it does, I'll do some more runs side to side and we'll go from there. Excellent. So, same as it always is when I do these things. I'm going to see you later on. Just wondering how much we're going to... So yeah, I can run all of that. I'll do the, the mixed batch one. I forgot we had that on there as well. So we can do the mixed batch. We've already got a load of sugar beet cut there. Bearing in mind I've got to allow for the fact there's already 90,000 litres of sugar beet in there from when we did our first sugar beet harvest. So I'm going to try and balance it. I'm going to have to do that. I'm, I know I'm destroying these saplings. What I'm going to do with this as well. And I'm going to put this end on. So that's not hopefully too bad. Like that. There we go, that should be better. I'm not sure what he's doing. Okay, he's lining up. I think I have to do some more rows this side of him. Sorry. What she's doing. <laughs> That's better. I'm just thinking as well now, shall I lease a second one? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna lease a second one. Just for my own sanity, just for speed of operation. Let's get another one of those. And then I want peak technology. Cool. Okay, first full load. I say first full load. I'm going to keep hold of the beaverator because I don't want to um, get rid of it and then find I've, I've got my balance wrong. Um, Canola field is done. I've got to bring that lorry over to the oil mill and I have fertilised it. That just needs mulching. Well, just needs mulching. Needs mulching and then prepping. That won't need anything else doing to it. The corn field and the sugar beet fields will both need ploughing if I'm going to move forward with it which I might well do corn as you can see still loads to go and I've bought the fertiliser spreader over here to do this and then I can mulch that as well like I say moving forward so I'm going to put these in and I'll probably put all the processes on I guess but do I want the one distributing now um you know, I put the sugar... Do you remember I put the sugar on in the last episode? I put it on storing so I could move it over to the bakers. <laughs> I did and I forgot about it. I forgot I'd done it. So this morning when I was going around doing all my jobs, I bought my wool over to the spinnery. Um, that way. Bought the wool over. I'm driving past that. Oh no, I had a massive long row of them. So I bought all the pallets of sugar over. So that's now got 7,000 litres of sugar in it. Uh, the flour still moving over from the flour mill, so there's 15,000 litres in there. And as you've already seen, we did a full pallet of bread, we did one of cake. That's all full and ready to process again. So when we do that big sell-off thing, we can run cake and bread through there and uh, get a whole load of it. So I've still got a little bit of sugar there that I can put in as it starts to run down, but the rest of it is now on distributing. So let's put the sugar beet cut in. 
and then what I'll do, I'll do a full load of regular, and then we'll just bounce it backwards and forwards. Like I say, I do need to make sure that I've got 92,000 litres of sugar beet cut. Why is that not unloading? Oh, did it move? There we go. Um, so yeah, I've got, oh, 95. I've got 95,000 litres of sugar beet. So I've got, if I'm going to balance it, I need to make sure I've got 95,000 litres more of sugar beet cut. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll just kind of balance it as best I can. Let's back that up. Disco that. Do that one. Don't want to bring the canola over. We'll get the canola oil going. I have to put that on storing because distributing I don't know where I'll distribute to the canola oil <laughs> not sure at the moment or I might just put it in and not run it yet I think that's probably the best bet so it's good to go when I need to mm. it's a sound idea in theory right let's go back past oh, grab the lorry come back and put that in corn Oh, oops, <laughs> I might have left the lorry in the way. Okay, canola. Those sugar beet harvesters fill up quick when they get going. Swing that round there. I only want to do about half, so I've got to be really careful on this. That will do. That's in. That's how we're looking here. Our sunflowers are coming in. Our olives, olives, 97,000 litres of olives I've got in here. Those olive trees are bonkers. That's brilliant. Those olive trees. I haven't been over here to check again. I've just been kind of keeping an eye on what's been going into the production facility. So while that's producing, it's distributing over to my, my food factory. And that's what I've been looking at. I never even thought to look at this. Wow. They, they, yeah, those olive trees, brilliant. I can't remember who they were by. Oh, blimey. Anyway, they're in the description, <laughs> whoever they were by. But yeah, as you can see, great sunflower. And now we've got canola oil. So I'll leave the canola at the, for the time being. I'm not going to turn that on yet. Because I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what I want to do with it. So this will go into storage, the rest of it. I'm going to put in the storage over here actually, where I've got the sugar cane. Because if I'm going to put it all of it into there in the end, if I decide to put it all in there, it just makes more sense to have it in this silo than, you know. I've been trying to sort everything out so they're all in. Everything's in one place. I know I sort of did some organisation in one of the previous episodes. So what I've done now is put all the lime into one place. My silage is split between three locations, but I've got a lot of it. I think I've got knocking on four million litres now, I think. So, yeah, a bit crazy. But anyway, so let's carry on with the corn and the sugar beet. Uh, what I'll probably do is... Um, I've got a spare tractor. Should I have a spare tractor? Yeah should have a couple of spare tractors I'll um, get them out and I'll get the mulching going on this field here why did I just drive away I need that for oh no that, that was for my canola the other one for corn is out there now I'll swap over okay it's 9.36 these did their job and did it very well. Yeah, it was expensive to lease them, but I can sell some methane or something to recover the money or the money I'm going to make from the sugar. There's all different ways around it. Now, I have got a little bit of an imbalance. I balanced it out over at the sugar mill. How much? It, it didn't really matter if I had more sugar beet cut to, to sugar beet. That was just in my head. I just needed to split it in half. There's a slight imbalance only because the capacity of the back of the pickup is less than the capacity of this 
um, and obviously the capacity of that as well. So that's got sugar beet in, it's going to be sugar beet cut. So what I'm going to do is put that through now and the front of the pickup or the pickup has got regular sugar beet. And then once this is done, perfect, we should be good to go. That should all start processing. I think it's going to work out with, we've got 108,000 litres in there. That's going to come in about 116, 120 odd thousand maybe. So maybe a little bit more. Not too much of a difference between the two. Um, we'll get that delivered over. Cornfield is still continuing. I want to get that done because I want to distribute the corn to the various different places. Get the ethanol processing again. Um, I'm mulching. I've done, I've mulched the canola field. Although there's a couple of bits because the mulcher leaves a little bit behind. I've just got to do a couple of strips to tidy that up. I'll mulch this, I'll mulch the other one, and then the two outside ones will need ploughing. Um, and then, yeah, because they've been ploughed, I can, I could, if I want to, I can seed straight onto those. Um, but the canola field will need to be cultivated if I'm going to put new stuff back into them. Which, you know, with the, the like I said before, the, the concept of moving forward, even if, I, if, if the Let's Play ends... Um, I would continue the cycle, you know, why wouldn't I? And I want to move into April anyway, so in my head there's that thing of, if I don't do it, and I move into April, that's the rest of this month and into next month wasted, it could have started growing. I know, it's it's the way my head works. I, I can't explain it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is what it is. How much have we got left of these? Okay. This is a brilliant setup. Like I say, there's auger wagons, there's all sorts of modded ways around it. But, um, I don't know. Something about a process like that. And I've said it before as well. You know what I miss? I miss, really miss. From FS, I want to say 17, it wasn't 19. It was, do you remember we had the, um, there was a conveyor belt that did bales? Yeah, that was brilliant. I used that on the Valley the Old Farm. When you remember, I don't know if you remember, but you had the um, the farm that had the hay loft up higher. And it was, you could drive up into it with a skid seal loader, and you could put the bales. Oh, it was brilliant! It had little side bits that went up and down, and brilliant bit of kit. So, let's move that out of the way. This will need to be packed away once I'm done. That bag will need to go back over to my roots, root and vine production. What we'll do is we'll put that back round. Like I said, I, I reckon this thing here should be bought out as a little mod in its own right. I don't know what you could put on it. There could be, what could you have on it? I just think it needs, like bale handling or, you know, I don't know, it just... For doing stuff in the yard, maybe a smaller version, but that's brilliant, isn't it? Black sheet bodding. Add some attachments to go on this bit. <laughs> Just an idea. Right, let's move that out of the way. Oh, there you go, 108,000 to 121. It's not, not too far out, was I? So, that will all go back. Thoroughly enjoyed using that. Uh, that can go away. That needs to go back over to the quarry, really. Do that. We can get that over there at some point. Perfect, and then that will go pipe in. I do love the fact you can drive this anyway. That's how it goes six miles now, but if you're doing logging work, you just need to reposition it or move it around. You're not driving to and from. The beacons as well on it, brilliant. Lighting, it's just such a cool bit. Job done! <laughs> oh, someone's blocked by someone else. 
Who? Oh, oh, for a side panel. Oh. <laughs> I keep going to put the cruise control on and it just doesn't always click on. And I just, I used to be, I'd love to just roll over, press a button, roll over, lean over, press a button, the dial to turn me the cruise control up and down. Oh, it's bliss. What's it stuck on? So it's stuck somewhere. I'll have to deal with that in a minute. So yeah, so what I'll do now is I'll get this in, get the sugar really ramping up now, and then, um, do I want to keep distributing it? Yeah, I can do, because I've got so much sugar cane in there, it doesn't matter, because I can then, once I've, I'm happy I've distributed enough around the place, I can then put it on to just store it if I want to, with just sugar cane. Yeah, we'll do it that way around. Just wanted to get the sugar beet cup going. That in. I'll the next bit in a second. Actually, I want to do both because I want to see how close I was to balancing them both out. Like I said, I think I'm going to be out by about 10, 12,000 litres maybe. So let's get that that on too. Sugar beet cut, sugar beet, sugar, and then mixed materials. We'll put that on as well. Let's get them all going. Sugar's on distributing for the time being. We'll leave it for a little while to distribute, and then we can pop it over. The syrup I've switched off for the time being. Again, that'll be another process I can whack back on again when I need to. Um, so that's that be done. So we're just waiting on the corn then. Once the corn harvest is complete, I will then distribute uh, there. Like I said, over to the food production facility and over to the ethanol plant. I think I'm probably going to do kind of a quarter there, quarter there and half the load to the ethanol. Because I think that's got a fair bit in it already, if I recall correctly. Um, because it's been going there from my greenhouse at my open garden. So, yeah, okay. Let's get all this back, the beef rate is back, sugar big halves is back focus on my corn. Got a lot done actually, very happy with that. Three harvests, sugar beet cut and sugar beet, and deliveries to various different productions. It's 10.24, the corn field is done, it's part way through being fertilised. I've bought over the mulcher, so mulching's been done on the canola field and on the sugar beet field, so I'll get the mulching done in the corn field and then I'll kind of work my way through because I can't help myself. <laughs> um, as far as putting corn in, I'm going to put, we've got 237,000. We've done really well, actually. I'm going to put about 87,000 in here, which will leave me 150. Quick maths. Um, because I'm pretty sure my food production facility has got about 50,000 50, litres in it. And that's mixed in. That's part of recipes. Whereas this is more corn focused, as is the ethanol. So 150,000 litres will go to the uh, the fuel production facility, so we can bang out a whole load more ethanol. I will double check as we drive past. I mean, if, if I have made a mistake, there's really a lot I can do about it. But not the end of the world. So we would wait till it's about 150. That will do. We'll double check this now this is again so this is just racking stuff up making sure the crops i'm doing are into the storage facilities and i'm good to go when i want to set them off so my sorghum flour is still producing and that's um going over to the bakery once that's full i can pause that for the time being and then we can set that on selling at some point if we want to um it would be better if i was running wheat barley oats and sorghum i'd get a lot more flour production but it's fine so my corn mill and crack corn i mean i've got 44,000 litres of crack corn sitting in the, the um, side already. And when I put cornmeal back on, I'll get two pallets out straight away. But like I said, if I set those under selling, 
Um, so I've kind of racked up a little bit in here. So we've got 88,000 litres of corn in there, good to go. I'll double check on our way through just to make sure our food production building. I'm sure, because I've got those four open gardens running corn and they're on distributing. They have been distributing to, to all over the place, but I'm pretty sure the majority of it has come here. I did put a bit in here as well, didn't I, before? When I used my corn last time. Oh, I can't remember now. Whether I did or didn't. Uh, how much have we got? Yeah, 55,000 litres of corn. So I haven't got to worry for that. That's fantastic. So what we'll do, we'll get this over to the ethanol plant. And we'll get the ethanol running again. 19,000 litres of diesel will last me quite a while. The tank I've got at the farm is a 10,000 litre. I filled out when I first started the Let's Play. Now, bearing in mind, I mean, look at this. Oh, this is probably not a good example. One of the bits of machinery I was in, what was it? Might have been the forage harvester. The hours on that is nuts. And I was thinking to myself, because that hasn't been used hiring a worker. If you're hiring a worker and doing other jobs, your tractors and things can go up and down fields and you can really rack up the hours. But the forage harvester, because I've been using it mostly for collecting grass, to put in to produce silage that's all been me driving and collecting swaths when you think about that the hours on it we'll have to check at some point it was quite scary how many hours i had on it um yeah of just sitting in that forage harvester it was yeah we'll have, a, have to have a look um so let's get the corn in there we'll get our ethanol running again so as i said earlier quite a busy old uh, Quite a busy old episode. Three harvests done. Sugar beet, canola and corn. Now sugar beet is now all in, chopped as well for our sugar mill. More corn to the ethanol plant, more corn to the grain mill. Uh, we've put... Oh yeah, we put some into the um, oil shack, didn't we? So that can run. Just wait for this to unload. And we'll be good. Uh, so, uh, next episode. What am I thinking? Next episode. I've got a load of stuff to do in between now, haven't I? Um, oh yeah, the poplars. I, I wanted. To, I'm sure the poplar harvest will be next. Just check, let's just check the really dark greens. I'm pretty sure. If we go across to growth, we've got our. Did I do wheat in that or barley? What did I do in that one? Oh, that was more sorghum, wasn't it? Oh yeah, that's nearly ready. Sorghum's quick. Uh, yeah, my a poplar field's on dark green now, so that's got to be next month, hasn't it? I'm not sure if I'm going to repurpose the um, vines because I'm sitting on quite a bit of, of grapes now that are ready to be processed. I got way more on my second harvest on than I did on the first harvest. So yeah, prep work on those. Other things are growing. I don't know if I'm going to reseed that or not. I might do and these three again I might do we'll see but as far as extreme sugar beet cutting <laughs> we're done I hope you've enjoyed the episode if you have please give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and you want to, if you want to share this video then please be my guest whatever you should choose to do thanks for watching